Hi, this is your host, Kristen Howe. I'm so excited to welcome you to our call with today's guest, Christopher Van Buren. Christopher is an entrepreneur with three successful businesses to his credit. He's the author of over 15 books on topics from travel to technology to self-help. He has integrated his 20-year study of personality systems, archetypes, and neuroemotional patterning into a powerful and practical system that helps people increase flow in their life. And on today's call, you will discover how to draw in unexpected and unplanned opportunities into your life, how to increase the flow of money and receive more of what you need. You'll also find out that you can eliminate unwanted emotions and get what you want in life. You'll find out ways to open up an incredible flow of energy and abundance, and you'll discover the one key practice that can deliver more flow and manifestation to any situation, project, or relationship in your life. So this is an exciting call. This is really, really hands-on stuff that you can start using right away, and I am psyched. Christopher, thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome to the call. Thank you, Kristen. Great to be here. It's exciting to be able to share you with people because I love sort of your take on things, and that's what they're going to get to experience in just a second. Can you start off by sharing a little bit of your story, and what I would love for you to share is some of the major turning points that you experienced in your life that have allowed you to manifest your current level of success. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, it's quite a, <laughs> for me anyway, it's quite a journey, quite a lot of adventure. I started out in publishing and, and content creation as an editor and a writer. I was a writer for many years. I worked as a literary agent after that for the, for the agency that actually represented me as a writer. And um, was very much involved in technology as well. At one point, I, I started my own company. I've always been sort of independent and entrepreneurial. And so I uh, have always tended to want to do my own projects and my own companies. And so I've started several. And, and the first one was a, a publishing company, which um, this is before the Internet. It was a periodicals publishing uh, uh, newsletters and so on for the uh, technology industry. And, and then uh, after a few years, I, sold, I actually sold that company and then later, many years later, started another publishing company that was spiritual publishing. And that's when I really started expressing and getting more into spiritual work and started studying things. And it was really a hobby of mine to study typing systems, personality typing uh, and so on, uh, everything from you know, very traditional typing systems like Myers-Briggs and, and, and so on to more sort of esoteric uh, typing systems like the Enneagram and, and things like that. And just sort of gathered it all together with studying neuroemotional technique, which is a, a modality that is often used by chiropractors uh, for clearing, it's actually clearing emotional patterns through the spinal column. <laughs> and just all started coming together for me in a kind of, uh, I like to kind of think of it as a map. It, it, it all started mapping together. The, the emotional patterns and and the uh, archetypal patterns and the personality patterns, they all started mapping together. So I started seeing these commonalities. And from there, I sort of developed, started the development of a uh, kind of a system or a map of patterns and how to, and how they might be cleared. That was about 20 years ago. <laughs> and since then, I've just been, you know, accumulating more and more. What, one of the things that's kind of interesting is that I've really been trying to look for, uh, and you mentioned my approach, and this is kind of the maybe where what you, what you're referring to is I've, I've been always looking for the place where theory becomes practice or or uh, intention becomes form. Or, you know, so what what is the what is that friction point where the rubber meets the road? You know, where where an idea becomes becomes concrete and I did finally kind of come to a place. There's a couple of places where that happens. And, and one of those places is the, is the topic of this call. We're going to talk about quite a bit, which is your agreements. And so I've been able to kind of map all of those previous pattern mappings and so on into this, into, into agreements. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, first of all, that's like more work than any of us probably would ever 
be willing to do. So that's amazing because we get to benefit from your work on this call. So thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> and it is so, so talk to me about this because I know that when I was introducing you, I said that one of the thing, you know, one of the things that you've done when, as you've created this whole, you know, this whole thing through your 20 years study is you help people increase flow in their life. So I think a really great, you know, cause flow is one of those words that yeah. we all hear thrown around. And if you could tell us what you mean by flow, I think that would be really, a really great way to start. Absolutely. It's really the heart and soul of, of this call and, the, and this, this topic that we're talking about and these recordings that I've, that I've created around them. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm identifying where, you know, that friction point between ideation and manifestation, you know, between, you know, what's a vision or an idea and what's in concrete form. And, and one of the places that occurs is in your agreements. When, when you have an idea or a dream, that's a concept in your mind. Well, how does that become a reality? Well, one of the first things that, that turns it into reality is when you form an agreement around it. And quite often that agreement is an agreement with yourself. Uh, if you make a goal, if you set a goal, you've just made an agreement with yourself. Uh, and then, of course, it goes way beyond that with agreements with others and so on and so forth. Now, those agreements are the beginning of a control of the flow. And, and, and again, the flow that I want to identify, and, and one of the things that, we, that I talk about in, in these recordings, is the kinds of flows that are in your life. And, and I, again, like to try to identify this bridge between what is sort of nebulous and an idea and what is concrete. And so, so I've identified the flows and three areas of flow in life. And you'll see that, well, for example, one, a lot of people talk about the flow of money, right? Mm -hmm. And, and money coming in and out of your life is, is a, is a flow is a currency, you know, and, and in fact, the, 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 the word currency, it means current, it means flow. But many people, will tell you that money really doesn't, money doesn't mean anything. It's just an abstract representation. Well, what is it an abstract representation of? What is the real thing that's flowing? And what I've identified, and, and this is nothing brand new to me, but I've identified three places where this flow, where the flow that's flowing <laughs> is the bridge between the abstract and the concrete. For example, with money, What's flowing when, when money flows is value. So if you think of the word value or think of what is value, you can think of it on an abstract level. It's a very abstract concept, what is value. But it's also quite concrete. You can think of a very concrete way of defining value for yourself as well. So value is a bridge between the abstract and the concrete. And, and your agreements around money control the flow of value. Wow. Okay. I love your, I love the use of agreements. I don't know. It just makes it a very different. So can we change our, if we realize, wow, I have an agreement around money that I isn't serving me. Yeah. Can you change your agreement? Well, there's actually four things you can do with agreements. What's important uh, is that you manage them well. What's important is that you're on top of them, you know, uh, in, in, in great maintenance of them. It, and that, and that whatever you're doing around your agreements, you're doing consciously. So one of the things you can do is change them. Of course, uh, I call that renegotiating an agreement. So you're just changing it, renegotiating it. And there are different parameters and, and guidelines for what to do around renegotiating an agreement. Obviously, you know, a written contract and a business organization and so on. You know, we have, we already have sort of social parameters around how that works and legal parameters around how those kinds of agreements work. But what about an agreement that's a relationship? You know, your relationship with your primary other. That, that's an agreement or a set of agreements. How do we renegotiate those? In fact, most people don't even know what they've been agreeing to. It's their yeah. unspoken. Right. And that, that, that's one of the other things you can do to manage your agreements is you can express them. Because many agreements that we are engaged in are not expressed. And so expressing an agreement is one practice. In fact, a very good practice around relationship-related agreements, because uh, they all tend to be unexpressed. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's very common. Another thing you can do, so you can, you can renegotiate agreements, you can express agreements, you can keep agreements, and you can break agreements. Those are the four ways you can manage your agreements. Okay. And as you manage, as you do those four things, and obviously expressing them and renegotiating them are the com- more complicated of the, of the four, uh, and those are the ones we focus on a lot in these recordings, those, as you do that and as you practice that and get on top of your agreements, flows begin to open. Those agreements act as like, like faucets to open or close the flows that are going on. Say that again. That was, I, I want people to really catch that. Yeah, your agreements act as faucets that you can turn on or off, up or down, to control the flow in your life. And there, and in this case, I've identified three areas of flow. Money, which I identify as value, is one. Okay. Love, or the the flow of love, is another. And I actually use a different word there, which is a little bit, again, more of a bridge between the abstract and the concrete, uh, because love is very abstract. Um, So I try to bring it into a little bit more concrete uh, place uh, by using a slightly different word there. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That word is uh, attention, uh, the flow of attention. And then the third area of flow is energy, uh, which, again, is sort of somewhat abstract and somewhat concrete. Uh, So those are the three flows that we talk about. And you can see they're fairly general. They, they can, those three flows control a lot of life. Yeah. (laughs) And like all of life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I I just love this, this whole way of, of looking at it, even like, you know, the agreements and the renegotiating and expressing and all of that. So how you say that we can increase the flow of money. And I would assume that you, you know, this is true with the flow of energy or the flow of anything and receive more of what we need, how do we do that? Um, really, by, by managing your agreements around money, now that's easier said than done, <laughs> <Yeah>. of course, <laughs> <laughs> because the reason we're out of agreements, let's, let's just focus on money agreements for, for example, the reason why we might be out of agreement around money is not always conscious. In fact, it's not usually conscious to us. We, we are in unconscious patterns that cause us to be out of agreement around, in this case, money. So, for example, you know, some patterns are very easily recognized and some are not, but uh, one example around money might be, you know, some people are just not good savers, let's say. Mm, okay. Just one example. Uh, yep. So let's say they're just, they're just you know, they spend, their, they just can't save money. And every time they try, they end up with a few hundred dollars or a few thousand, whatever it is, and it's just gone. You know, they spend it on something or they need it or, you know. So that's a pattern. And mm-hmm. it's usually caused by an unconscious program, let's, let's call it, or, you know, you can call it a virus or a program or something that's in you. So it's difficult to just break that pattern and start increasing flow there. You, you, need, to, you need to disrupt the pattern. And so a lot of what's talked about is, uh, how to actually use p- pattern disruptors so that you can break up the flow and get more flow going. Yeah, exactly, because I think that's that's what a lot of people, and I know I hear this all the time from, from you know, the extraordinary people that are listening to these calls, is things like, well, Kristen, I know I'm blocked in this area, or I know I have, you know, something going on subconsciously over here, but I can't figure out what it is which leaves right. me feeling like I can't do anything about it. So what would you recommend is the, the first step that we take maybe to discovering what some of these things are, you know, some of the patterns that we then need to disrupt? Right. Well, that's, that's where the personality typing technology kind of comes in. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I've identified what I, I call, I use the word archetypes. I've identified seven archetypes which you can, and then the patterns that go with those archetypes, the, the types of the types of patterns that are commonly associated with those archetypes. And it's really just a way to help us identify what the patterns are. And the patterns are usually identified as either emotional patterns. So you can, you, you can often sort of just know how you feel. <laughs> you can say, yeah, I feel, 
So anger, frustration, resentment. Do you feel any of those things around your money agreements? Uh, yeah, I feel frustrated all the time. Okay, great. So now we can identify this is where you are. You're in this archetype. And then there's also behavior patterns. So sometimes if you can't get in touch with your emotions, you can identify your behaviors or at least repeating repeating behavioral patterns occurring in your life. The same behavior, the behaviors that go with the archetype associated with anger, resentment, emotions are things like victimization or bullying. Those are two behavioral patterns that go with those emotional patterns. So you can say, oh, yeah, I feel like a victim around money all the time. That happens to me all the time. So the archetypes and the, the mapping of the archetypes helps us to identify where we are and we'll be in different places at all times. We'll be in different places with concerning different agreements. So with your money, you might be in, in that archetype, which, which is what's called the warrior archetype. And then with a relationship, you might be in some other archetype with exhibiting completely different patterns and emotions. Hmm. So, okay. So, so that, that's good for people to hear because I think that happens a lot where they're like, okay, so I am this. But that's helpful to realize you might be this here and this there. Is there something we can do? Is there something you could take us through to sort of, I don't know, take an inventory of our agreements? Is that just because I think that would really help solidify this? Because this is new to a lot of people listening, and it's it's exciting in that. But if if there's something you could do to help us take inventory, I think that would help. Absolutely. In fact, inventory is like the first step. It is um you know, you uh, and I have a little worksheet that, you know, we have to make it a little easier, uh, kind of organize it. But, all, you know, all that's really required is to go through your life. I break it into three areas just to make it a little easier to think about. Money is one area. So think about all your money agreements, not all your money agreements, but the money agreements that seem to be causing you, you know, trouble, causing you pain, causing you suffering. Okay. So let's say it's around your job or, uh, you know, or or. It may be a particular specific agreement. You know, I don't like this project contract that I got into with these people. I, I don't know, something like that. So you think okay. about all your money, money related agreements and you jot those down, the ones that seem to be out of place in some way. And then you, you go to the emotions chart that I, that I give you, which is the seven archetypes and the emotions that are associated. And you find your emotional patterns that you're feeling around those agreements. So if it's frustration and anger, that's that's you've identified that. Put that down. Yeah, you know, if you're feeling powerless and and uh, hopeless, that's a different archetype, a different pattern. You put that down. So you go through and you identify the emotions that you're feeling around those agreements, or the behaviors that you're noticing around those agreements. And now you've created your inventory. You do that with your money agreements. You do that with your relationship agreements, and you do that with your health and happiness agreements. Health and happiness is tend to be agreements that you have with yourself, although not always, sometimes they're with others, but by, by no means should you overlook agreements with yourself. What is your agreement around your own health you know, that you have with yourself? Could you give us, because I think that's sort of an interesting area where we might not be used to looking at this. Do you, could you give us an example of a health and happiness agreement? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's say, um, well, first we start with the patterning. So so let's say somebody is identifying, they're thinking about their health and happiness, and they've identified, say, a behavioral pattern that they tend to be obsessive about their happiness. Uh, I don't, uh, let's say. Um, okay. There's, there, there's an obsession with uh, going out and being happy all the time. I don't know, we've seen people like that, uh, probably, you know, uh, maybe that's one of the one of the patterns that you can identify is ob obsession and, and so on. So let's say uh, that's the pattern you've identified. And so you jot that down in your inventory. OK, uh, around my happiness, I, I feel obsessive about making sure I'm doing happy things. And it, and it leads me to these patterns and these behaviors. So we, what we do then is we go to the chart. We see that that's, that that particular pattern goes with, with the, I believe that's one of the archetypes called the artist archetype is obsession. And then you go to the area that tells you how to disrupt that pattern, basically. What are the, in other words, what's the antidote to that pattern? Hmm. 
And each one of the archetypes has its own sort of antidote, in a sense, uh, its own needs. And, and the reason why each archetype has its own, its own antidote is because each archetype, the patterns associated with each archetype are there because of core fears and core perceptions associated with that archetype. So if you're exhibiting the patterns from a particular archetype, you are also therefore in the core fear of that same archetype. And from there we can find the healing. I love this because it allows us to, or at least for me, I'm going, oh, that makes so much sense why someone might be attempting to do something to, to fix a behavioral pattern or something like that. But if they're trying to, it, it's sort of like trying to solve something from, from the wrong archetype. So it's almost like the archetypes give us the key to who we are so we get our specific, like, user's guide. Is that a, a so good way true. of looking that, at it? <laughs> that's exactly, exactly it. And, and, in fact, some people think about, uh, just to kind of bring it a little simpler because this sounds like it's so complex, it's really not that complex. There's really just a chart <laughs> uh, that you look at. And you can find the patterns and find the antidotes. It's, it's really that simple. But that, I, that tells you why, for example, some, you know, great wisdom sometimes doesn't work for us. You know, uh, wisdom, you know, wisdom like go from your heart, you know, listen to your heart or go from your passion. Right. You know, uh, you, know some, you, you know, somebody listening to that saying, okay, I'm, ha- I'm having trouble with money. Um, I have these patterns going around money. And somebody says, oh, well, listen to your heart and go with your heart. And they do that and it doesn't work. And it's because, well, that's not where they, <laughs> that's not the archetype they're experiencing. Going right. from your heart, going from your heart is the, is what I call the giver receiver archetype. And if you're in the giver receiver patterns, then that's going to work for you. But if you're in the warrior archetype, that's not going to work for you. Interesting. So that explains why you could have, you know, 10 people standing in front of you and, one person could say something and three of the people could go, oh, my God, that makes so much sense. And their lives change almost instantly from, you know, the paradigm shift. And everybody else is looking at you like, well, it kind of it makes sense. But, huh? <laughs> yeah, so that exactly. I, I love that. Yeah, that what a, what a cool thing, because and, and that was going to be my next question. So it sounds really complicated, but. It, it really isn't, correct? I mean, you figuring it out for 20 years, that was complicated, but it's really not that complicated when it's, when it's really broken down. You've sort of distilled it. Is that a good way of That's right, yeah. It? It, okay, it, cool. It, exactly, yeah. It's, it's kind of like I've created a map in a way where all these things kind of map together using the archetypes as sort of the, you know, the, the identifier, let's say, mm. and the emotional patterns and the behavioral patterns as the place to identify the, the, the place where you can sort of see where you are. And then the antidotes are mapped out for you. These also, you know, there are seven archetypes for those people who are familiar with the chakras. They map to the chakras. Oh, okay, for those cool. people, Yeah, for those people who are familiar with uh, Chinese medicine, they map to the Chinese body meridians. It, it all kind of, they, all these systems map together. Very cool. Okay, so and here's a, a question. So let's say you're working with this and suddenly you go, oh, that's so interesting. I am definitely this. But can you also use it to be a little bit more aware in your dealings with other people if you can clear? Now, I'm in no way suggesting that anybody tries to <laughs> change anybody or tell anybody what archetype they are because we all know that can get. But I think it it sounds like it could open up a sensitivity to, oh, my God, I'm trying to tell this person to go from their heart because that makes sense to me, but that doesn't make sense to them. So perhaps it <laughs> opens up a different type of communication. Is that, is that true? You're, you're, you're so right on. In fact, you've jumped, you've jumped to uh, basically what's in one of the later recordings, one of the later sort of modules where I kind of go into how to take this to another level, which is this isn't really just about you. This is sure. also about how, how you can identify this in others um, if you can, I, you can get good with this information, you can start to see it in other people and say, okay, that person is clearly exhibiting, you know, this pattern. Uh, that's clearly, you know, let's say the one pattern, I'll give you an, an example. You know, uh, it's very common in, in large organizations for people to exhibit what I call the ivory tower or the not invented here pattern syndrome, you know, where they, <laughs> okay. you, you've seen that, everybody's seen that, I'm sure. 
you know, where if it's, you know, if it's not something that's invented here, uh, it just doesn't carry any weight. If it doesn't, if, if the person bringing it didn't go through the proper channels, didn't have the proper education, doesn't have the proper credentials, uh, then they don't even consider it. it. It's a very typical pattern that's associated with an archetype called the magician archetype. And it's very common, commonly exhibited by people in large organizations, government, uh, religious organizations, educational organizations, and so on. And so you can, if you recognize that in someone else, say, okay, well, this person is clearly exhibiting, you know, the not invented here pattern. So obviously they're in the magician archetype here. Well, I know that the core fear of that archetype is the fear of isolation. And so now I know what this person's core fear is, even if they don't, even if they don't know it themselves. Right. So now you can begin to speak to that person with that in mind. And it actually helps you increase your compassion and your ability to really make a difference in people's lives. See, I love that. Even just you bringing that awareness, this is something that people could take off this call instantly, you know, whether they end up working with archetypes or not. I think what you're doing with what you're talking about and teaching here is opening up that awareness of <laughs> literally the concept that when you're talking to someone, they might not be coming from, they're not operating from the same filters or whatever. So perhaps looking at it and going, oh, well, what, what makes them tick? I mean, that's sort of a really basic way of saying it. Yeah. But, but it's opening up that awareness. And I think that's huge. I think that's so powerful. Or even the awareness of I'm trying to take this other stuff that I'm hearing and shove it on myself, but it's not resonating with me, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right, exactly. It, it it really does. If if you can kind of bring this awareness to your interactions with others, it really does give you a, you know, a ten thousand foot view and a, and a sort of a, you know, a lack of attachment in a, in a way, uh, along with an awareness. It's a, it's a great a vehicle. But again, you know, first that that's this is sort of advanced. We we jump to a little right. bit more advanced. You know, first is really kind of identifying these things in yourself, uh, so that you can open up your own flow. If, if you've noticed that you, you yourself have that tendency to have an ivory tower or not invented here syndrome or pattern, then there are things that you can do for yourself. So mm -hmm. that's the first step. <laughs> yeah, and let, me, and let me ask you this. With, in talking about the agreements, obviously we're looking at, as you've said, we have agreements in these different areas of our life. So I would imagine that you can't just, ju you know, if someone gets off the call with us today and starts to jump into trying to look at all of them all at the same time, they might be a little overwhelmed. So does it matter which agreements we start looking at first? Do you have a recommendation for which ones we start looking at first? Yeah, the inventory sheet that I provide also, so it, it breaks the agreements into those three areas money, relationship, and health and happiness. And then you identify your patterns, whether they're emotional or behavioral, for each of those agreements. And then you identify the intensity of that emotion. So is this a very intense emotion that you're experiencing all the time, or is it kind of mild? And so we work on the ones that are the high intensity first. That makes sense. Okay, so, the, the, so I, wow, I have some intense emotions attached to some of my money money patterns so that that's where I'm going to start or you know and yeah. that sort of thing okay that makes that makes yeah. a lot of sense now let me ask you this does this does working with agreements and managing agreements and renegotiating which I want to ask you a little bit more about in a second can that interfere with or limit some of our other work that we might be doing you know some of the other modalities that we might be working with to I hate saying improve ourselves because that's not at all because I, I think we're already perfect and we're just re-uncovering ourselves, but yes. to move ourselves forward and step into our extraordinary, is will it get in the way with that or does it work with it? I, I really think and I've found that it's it's kind of a, a helpful key to unlock the potential in other, you know, you know one of the things that I have in these recordings and, and this experience uh, for people that want to, uh, look at the whole thing, is that I, I identify other people's work quite often all the way through. I say, if, you know, if you want to go deeper in this area, because I'm, I'm identifying seven archetypes and seven patterning groups, I can't give you 
give people all the information about all seven. I don't know all that, you know. Right, um, right. I'm providing the map, you know, and the and the guidelines for, you know, for going in and, and helping to disrupt those patterns. And then I give other people's work. You know, how do you go deeper here? How do you take this even farther? If, if you're having problems with self-esteem and hopelessness, you know, though, there are experts in self-esteem that, that go way beyond what I can provide. But I can right. help you identify you know, that it's a self-esteem issue around this, around this agreement, let's say a money agreement, and that, the, and that the way to disrupt the pattern and increase flow is by doing these things. Now, if you want more about self-esteem, go to this person. So I, so I really think it helps unlock other, pe- other people's work quite a bit. Yeah, I love that. I can, I can see where that would, would happen because, you know, then it, it could give you that one thing that you've been missing. You know, sometimes we'll get something and we know, like we're reading someone's book and we know this is the key, but I can see that that would help you unlock how it can be the key for you. So I, I love that. I think that's, right. that's really great. Okay, so when we're managing our agreements – and renegotiating our agreements, how do we know? Because what, I, what I'd love to do is give people a feel. So let's say they don't have the archety- you know, the worksheet, worksheet in front of them and all of that, just how they could even start to have this work for them on a very basic scale today. So how, what's one way that you could tell people they could even start renegotiating agreements you know, now on a, on a sure. very basic level? Sure. One of, one of the easiest practices that you can do, one of, the, one of the easiest things to put into place right away without even having to, you know, have all the information is the practice of expressing unexpressed agreements. And this, sometimes these occur in your money agreements, especially in the area of agreements with yourself. And remember, every goal that you've made <laughs> and stated if you've done goal workshops or anything like that, every one of those goals is an agree- unspoken agreement with yourself. So include those. You know, uh, you might need to renegotiate those or or look at them again uh, or express them better. But especially in the area of relationship and health and happiness agreements, those often tend to be unexpressed with others and with yourself. So one of the things, things you can do is look at your relationships, primary, secondary, friends, work Work relationships, doesn't matter, all of them are part of this. Anything that's causing friction or suffering in your life. And see if you can express the unexpressed in there. And, and some of the guidelines for doing that, and I, we get into this quite a bit in, in the recordings, but uh, to give a little, little bit of it, you want to make sure that you cover certain things in, in an agreement. Any, any contract in a, in a formal sense, business contract, has certain parameters to it. And so any agreement that you have in an informal sense should have certain parameters as well. One of those parameters is that you want to think about what the expectations are on both sides of the agreement. Uh, agreements really are just ways of managing expectations. Right. So what is that, right? What does that person expect from me? What do I expect from him or her? And, and if you're looking at relationships, you want to, you want to try to quantify as much as you can, even though, you know, we don't tend to quantify things about relationship especially romantic relationships, it seems so unromantic to quantify love, you know, things like that. But you can break it down into things like attention and, and time spent with each other. You know, how much should you really expect? You know, put, put, the, put that down. You know, what, what is sufficient for you and what is not sufficient for you? What do you accept and what do you not accept? And what does the other person accept and not accept? What are you willing to give and what are you wanting to receive? And those are some of the parameters that you want to cover when you express an agreement. Very cool. Okay. So then when it comes time to renegotiating the agreement, you know, if we look at something and go, wow, this agreement is just not, it's, this is not serving me in any way, shape or form. It's actually not even serving them in any way, shape or form. How do you know you're renegotiating it correctly? Well, you you have the parameters in place and you know what you're willing to accept or not accept. You know, I'll give you a, an example. This is a, a little little quick story from somebody I worked with. She was uh, having trouble in relationships at work, particularly at work, related to people not treating her well, <laughs> kind of, uh, in a sense, bullying. It was sort of adult workplace bullying that, that was going on, and, and she was sort of a victim a victim to it. 
And she realized that it was a pattern and that it happened all the time. And it happened with people who were senior to her in, in the organization and people who were junior to her in the organization, which is a total shock that people junior to her would bully her when she's their senior, right? Right. But through the, through the chart, she was able to identify uh, the pattern, identify the archetype. And one of the things she realized that she needed to do to renegotiate with herself and with these, with these agreements is, in, in this case, for her to avoid certain people. In, in, in other words, in her case, in this particular situation, her best antidote was to avoid certain relationships. Ultimately, what it came down to was she needed to listen to her intuition. She needed to make a, an agreement with herself to stop and listen to her intuition related to every relationship she was in. Because her, her intuition was telling her who was a bully and who was not a bully. She just wasn't listening to it. Wow. With me? Uh, and, and, yeah, so, it's so powerful because you do. I mean, that, what, a, what a great – and don't you think, and this is my personal opinion, but you please feel free to say no, I don't think that. <laughs> don't, you, don't you think that when you become – aware of something, when you become aware of an agreement that you might not have become aware of, when you become aware of a pattern you might not have been aware of, don't you think the awareness alone begins a shift? Absolutely. In fact, in, in many cases, uh, that's the beginning of the shift is, is bringing awareness to it. And, and that's, that's, you know, repeated over and over with many, many, you know, many great thinkers throughout time have said, you know, awareness is everything. And, but, but there's also, situations and patterns where awareness is it's difficult to start with awareness um, mm. for example the bullying pattern if, if you happen to be the, the bully rather than the victim it's just extremely difficult for bullies to be aware of themselves as the bully no, in other words right. nobody thinks they're the bully right right so awareness is a very difficult thing to bring to that pattern so right when you can, yeah, there are patterns where awareness works very well, and there are patterns where awareness is very difficult to find. Right. And so that's, that's why we offer the behavioral patterns as opposed to just the emotional patterns, because you or someone close to you can usually identify behavior patterns. Right. That makes sense. So with this, with, you know, uh, the agreements and, and the archetypes and all of that, is that how you ultimately, by with the pattern interrupt and all of that, is that how you ultimately eliminate those unwanted emotions and sort of open yourself up to the flow of the abundance, more money, more opportunities, all of that stuff? Is that really what where the power of this is? Yeah, pretty pretty much. I mean, the, the, the antidote disruptor patterns are specific to each archetype, and they are uh, designed to disrupt patterns for that archetype. So if you find yourself in specific patterns, you've identified the archetype, you go to that archetype's, you know, antidote patterns, which we call the steps needed for flow is what it's what it's called in the in the recording and on the chart. And you take the steps and you do your best to apply those steps, you know, earnestly to your situation. I always recommend, you know, going slowly, taking small steps and giving yourself, you know, a lot of credit for small movements and adding up a lot of small movements uh, makes a big change. Very cool. I love that. Okay. Now you say that there is one key practice that we can do that will deliver more flow and manifestation to any situation, any project, any relationship. So of course I'm <laughs> going to say, you know, Christopher, what the, what the heck is that? Cause we have to know. So what, what is that practice? Sure. There's a, there's an archetype which is the third archetype in the chart called it. Uh, I identify it as the, as the architect and it, it's known in other systems by other names. Sometimes it's called the analyst, and, and there, there are other names for it. I call it the architect because it's the, it's the archetype that sort of is related to the foundation and structure of your life. So one of the things that the architect is responsible for is change. And what, one of the things that's key throughout this entire system, and, you know, each archetype has a very important key to, to us, you know, all of us. But the, the change key in this third archetype is especially critical because it's only with change that we can disrupt a pattern. 
So it's really a big part of pattern disruption is the ability to accept change. Hmm. And we resist change. You know, human beings by nature resist change. We are a predominantly left-brained culture. We, the left brain by nature resists change because change is risk associated with risk and the left brain is, is there to keep us safe. And so there's a predetermined tendency to not want to change. So how do we change? You know, because change is associated with fear and fear of from thousands of years ago, you know, changing your location was, was a life and death, you know, event, right? right? Right. Moving, moving from one cave to another is, you know, is, is a life and death threatening event, you know. So it's in our DNA, you know, uh, to resist change. And so, so it's very key. And so the key practice here is a practice of it's really about change and it's about pattern disruption on, a, on, a, on sort of a global level, uh, personal global level, uh, I mean. And that, that, that practice is this, that, that you – uh, the, the one pattern disruptor that, that sort of works globally and, and can change everything is the, is the pattern of doing exactly what you resist. So, because, and here's the here's the thought behind it: the, the the thing that you don't resist is the thing that you're familiar with, and the thing that you're right. familiar with is, is a pattern. <laughs> so, obviously, the thing that's unfamiliar familiar is is the pattern disruption, and so. Even if it's not something that you want to create a habit out of, just the act of doing it to to disrupt the other pattern will change everything. I love. I mean, that's something people can do literally. The, this call ends, and they can try it just once today. I think that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what? And you know, you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know, I. You have to look at your patterns and say, yeah, I really resist this. Like for me personally, uh, an example. You know, I, I mentioned earlier in the call that I tend to be entrepreneurial and I've always kind of done my own thing. I tend to, uh, when I do business, I tend to do solo type businesses as opposed to group team businesses. Mm-hmm. And I realized one time that I actually resist working with teams. I, I like working by myself and it's a pattern. And right. um, so I actually you know, went down, well, I call it going down the dark path. It's, it, you know, the, <laughs> you know, the thing that you resist is the dark path. You don't know what's down there. So going down the dark path is, is the practice of disrupting that pattern. So I, I went out of my way to seek out a partner to work with as, as uncomfortable as it made me all the way, you know, so that's the practice is you just, you be honest with yourself about what you resist if you're if you don't save money, for example, back to that original example we started with, you're not a saver. You don't think it's you know worthwhile. You, you people say, oh, you should just save twenty dollars a month, and you know after ten years, and you roll your eyes and you think, what is you know that's stupid. I'm never going to do that. Right. <laughs> that's exactly the thing you need to do. I love that. Okay, so everybody, you got that. You can you can do that even on a small scale today that it's so that's really powerful i mean that right there i'm like oh that's the just the incredible nugget of this call because you're yeah. right that's how you interrupt your pattern how did that work out by the way when you went and found a, a partner started getting well the, you know there are some things that were sort of mildly expected you know the partner that i brought sure. in was a, a a bit of a front person you know sales uh-huh. person which is great because i needed that anyway and so obviously that started bringing in more sales calls and more opportunity in business. And so the whole thing just kind of went in a direction that it, anybody else would have looked at it and said, well, that's obvious. And, but I was resistant to it. <laughs> but see, what I think is so interesting is, and, and I want to point this out because I've had this experience in my own life, but you, you've given us the perfect illustration from yours. So I'll use you as the guinea pig anyway, <laughs> is that you, your pattern was, it was working. It, that was actually you working solo. It was you were successful. You were doing well, but by going down the dark path, you opened up even more opportunity. That's true. And, and but one of the things that I experienced quite often in my own solo, you know, mm-hmm. businesses and so on, were, was a lot of up and down. So right. 
Uh, yes, it went well, but it also was a roller coaster and, and right. quite often unpleasant. And so this pattern disruptor really helped me bring in a whole new uh, flow, really. Yeah, see, that's that, uh, literally I'm like, oh, l- there's a huge light bulb over my head because it is that thing of like, oh, okay. So even though, you know, I can look at this and go, oh, yeah, but I've I've done okay with it. If there is, if you feel like maybe there's been a ceiling on how okay you've done or, you know, the thing that's allowing you to not really look at it and go, well, that needs to change because you have had some success with it. Or, you know, I have had roller coaster because I experienced that in my own business stuff where, As long as I was trying to make it just me, which I was, you know, very similar to you, I was trying to do for the longest time, it it was ups and downs or I was, you know, stressed to the max or I was working nonstop and therefore there was a, a cap on what I could do and how many people I could reach and then when when I finally, as you said, went, oh, okay, and I did it without realizing what I was doing, I need to, even though it makes me uncomfortable and that's not what I want to do, I need to seek other people out, that's when then things started to explode yeah. on a pretty large, so it, that's a that's a great lesson to learn because it's not just the patterns that are completely flat out not working. Some of them might be working a bit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, anywhere you, that you want to increase flow, really. Yeah. This practice is a, is a good practice for disrupting patterns, and any pattern disruption generally loosens up flow. So always, always cool. a good thing. I love that. Okay, so, so what I'd love to hear, because I love hearing what, you know, I'm having huge, like, ooh, aha moments over here, which is exciting, and my arms are flapping around because of it. <laughs> That's what happens when I get all like, yay, this is so cool. Can you share with us, do you have any stories of people who have worked with you on this and have had – you know, significant transformations or, you know, it's just really great success stories where you're like, see, this is what's possible because I love showing people what is possible when they actively apply this stuff in their life. Yeah, yeah. There are there are many, you know, from money to relationship, you know, to help. You know, the one that I mentioned before always, always stands out for me because it was such a dramatic thing, the woman with the uh, bully problem. Because mm-hmm. it was, it, it almost happened, you know, like, Overnight. I mean, once, you know, once the realization happened and once she started realizing that she wasn't honoring her agreement with herself to listen to her own intuition, Mm -hmm. the whole the whole thing just flipped around. Her intuition was already providing her with the information she needed. All she needed to do was uh, was honor that agreement. And she no longer accepted. She no longer got got herself into situations where bullies were. She didn't have to learn any technique, anti-bullying techniques or anything like that. She simply listened to her intuition and 10 miles uh, bef- you know, before she encountered the person, you know, from a distance, she, her intuition, you know, alarm was going off and she went and she would respect it and say, that's not somebody I'm going to go into a business with or a, or a project with. So that, that example always stands out for me as a very dramatic one that relates to a very specific archetype. Let's see, there, you know, there are some around relationships where, let's see, where people have changed their primary relationship because of, <laughs> there, some of these things get very personal, you know. Sure. With, with people, you know, people, one, one thing that's very common in relationships, primary relationships, love relationships, is a lack of a expression of, of the agreement. We think of love, you know, we, we use the term love and, we, you know, love is a very abstract term. So one of the things that expressing an agreement can do in a love relationship is make it more concrete. So, you know, you, you start to identify, okay, well, so how much time do I need from that person? And how much time do I, am I willing to give to that, to that person? How much attention am I willing to give and how much do I want to receive? How many hours a day do I expect that person to be thinking about me? And how much is reasonable and how much will I be thinking about that? I mean, this is really bringing it down to like, you know, real nitty gritty concrete things. And you don't have to sign this agreement. You don't have to give it to the other person even. All you have to do is express it for yourself, mm. right? So I had a couple that was, that did that. They looked back on their their agreement that they had before in their previous phase, let's say, which was which was never expressed either, right? But they used this this chart, this map, to go back and say, well, listen, if we had expressed this agreement in our previous 
phase, what would we have agreed to and how did we do? And they went through that and they saw that they did pretty well, actually, you know, that they got about 80 percent of what they thought they would have been agreeing to. And it, and it brought them to, well, let's make a better agreement now for this next phase of our relationship because they were going into a new a new living situation, uh, you know, some changes that, that kind of designated a new phase for them. And they decided, well, let's, let's make this phase, let's make some agreement around this phase. What, what's important to us? Let's do things better than we did in the last phase. And it really just alleviated a lot of little friction, little arguments and, you know, cause things got just expressed. This is what I expect out of this phase. This is what I want out of the phase, not, not necessarily this is what I want out of you, but right. this is what I want out of our relationship in, a, in general. You know, I want to feel, you know, whatever, this or that. I, I want you to help me with my self-esteem or I want you to help me, you know, with my physical relaxation. I get so tense or, you know, whatever it is, right? But it gets expressed. Wow. I mean, this really is just, it's so powerful because I can see how it really helps you. I mean, those were very specific things. And I'm like, oh, wow. I, you know, I have a great relationship, but wow, if I expressed any of that, that would be, that would absolutely take you to the next level. And, you know, and it's just never occurred to me. So I can see how this could really be such a valuable key to, to really opening up, as you said, opening up flow in all the areas of your life. I just think it's, it's so valuable and so exciting. I love hearing something that's you know, a little bit, because this is a little different than, than what I've heard before and what I've brought to everybody listening before. So that's that's very exciting for me to be able to share. And I know that you actually did put together a special offer for everyone. So what I want to do, everyone, I highly encourage, go click on the special offer button that is on this page, and it will take you right there. And Christopher, if you could talk us through what we'll find there, that would be fantastic. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's a series of recordings and uh, worksheets, basically. There are nine primary recordings, uh, actually 10. There are nine modules uh, and nine recordings for each module. And then uh, the first module actually has one extra one, which is sort of your uh, introduction to your inventory. It's, it, it takes you through uh, building your agreements inventory. Uh, and we actually talked a little bit about, uh, quite a bit about that here already. So, mm. Those of you who do uh, get the download and all those files might be able to skim through the, the first one a little bit because of uh, what you've heard already today. So there are nine audio recordings. You can do them in order, one through nine, or you can jump around based on where you identify yourself in the chart. There's a chart in two different formats, an Excel version and a PDF version, whichever one works best for you. And then you identify using the inventory and the chart, you identify where you are and you go to the recordings and the recordings will give you some background on the, on that archetype and the patternings, what it looks like, what you, what you're experiencing and why. Then it goes into what you need to do to disrupt those patterns. Then, then there are another nine recordings that are uh, meditations that are just sort of supportive meditations for each of the archetypes uh, to help you sort of bring it in a little extra a little extra piece to help bring it in wow i love that uh, you know and it, it's it's true I'm, I'm sitting here going wow this is so valuable because like you said you can start interrupting the patterns right away so what are some of the when someone starts working with this what are some of the things that they could start uh, you know expect to experience like starting right away is there something that you say, oh, yeah, you're probably going to experience this pretty quickly? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I encourage up front, and it, uh, I talk about this in the, in the first session recording, is to is even though you can jump around uh, based on where you find yourself, I do encourage you to start with the first archetype, okay. which is the archetype related to anger, frustration, and resentment called the warrior archetype. And the reason why I encourage this, and it's not necessary, but it's because the, the patterns associated with that archetype have to do with breaking denial. And it's kind of like a first step. It's kind of like you have to start there to kind of break it open. So, and one of the great things about that is that it's also, it also results in usually 
90% of the time results in immediate breakthrough uh, because once patterns are, once denial patterns are broken, flows just start happening. It, it's one of the places that where the, there are some of the biggest blocks to flow. Hmm. But fortunately, it's also one of the areas that's the easiest to break open when, when you go through the, you know, the steps that are given. So you can expect, you know, if you, if you start with that one, you can kind of expect to see some, in, some flow happening pretty quickly, you know, from the first lesson, you know, from the first module. Wow, very cool. Okay, so I love that because that is something where it's like you you can actually, you know, not just theoretically start breaking patterns, but you can open up flow very quickly. So to access this page for yourself, simply click on the special offer button that's on this page and you will be sent right there. And Christopher, I have to say thank you so much because you really did, as you said, you know, we went through a lot of that today. So you really sort of peeled back the you know, the, the lid on this and actually let us really see into what you're doing and the, you know, you really talked at length with us about the agreement so that, you know, we could do stuff to interrupt our pattern. As I said, there was the nugget of the call that you could start doing stuff to interrupt your pattern right now. And I think that's really exceptional. And I appreciate that you were willing to reveal that to us. I think that's a good way of putting it. And, My you know, just, yeah. and, and everything you've done here, I mean, you're, you're so, it's, you're just really very giving and authentic, and I so appreciate that. If you were to say, okay, everybody in the Manifest Everything Now community, you're all amazing, and here's what you need to know as you head off from this call, what would you what would you say to us? Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, this is a practice. Life is a practice. It's an art, and, and it's a practice. And, you know, to go easy on yourself – that wisdom of, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. And as you go down the dark paths of life, and I hope you do, <laughs> go down slowly, you know, uh, take step, take small steps and give yourself, you know, credit for what you do change. The, the beauty is that as you do take small steps, you'll see small wins and small increases in flow, and that will automatically make you feel better. And so little by little, uh, your self-esteem goes up, your flow goes up, and everything just spirals upward instead of spiraling downward. But just, you know, remember that patience and persistence, you know, practiced over time really, really does work. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And, and, and I think I love that you said that because it's true. The momentum you can gain from actually being willing to, you know, be gentle with yourself and go slowly down those dark paths. At for it, there's an incredible momentum that can build by doing that. Do you agree with that? Yes, yes, there is. And 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 sometimes you can you can stumble onto a particular blockage, break it open, and the momentum and flow that happens is almost overwhelming. And 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 it and it takes you to another pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah, and and it's and that's actually a good thing. And it's one of the things we talk about is is that you what you want to do sometimes is you know that it's almost too much to expect to break open a, a flow and just have it flowing. You know, what's going to happen is you're going to break open a flow and then another pattern comes and and stops it, you know, at a higher level. And so now you now you're now you're experiencing a different archetype in that same agreement. So now you can treat it in a new way. So it's it's an ongoing process. It's not a magic formula. There are some <laughs> there are some magical pieces to it in a, in a way, but it is a sort of a practice. And and I just encourage everyone to give themselves patience and persistence with it. I love that. I I I think that's fantastic. And everybody, please, you know, go and pay attention to what we talked about today and start interrupting your patterns right now because, you know, Christopher gave us the the tools to do that immediately. So I, I am thrilled because that's so exciting for what that means for all of you. You are all extraordinary. I thank you for being here. And Christopher, you were just fantastic. And I can't wait till we get to do this again. So thank you all, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.